Hello, and welcome to the Fabula Obscura podcast. This is episode three of Paranormal Fall. Now, the reason I named this episode Paranormal Fall is I was trying to figure out what to name it, and we're obviously going to release this right before Halloween. And so it could have been a Halloween episode, but given that Mike and I are both from San Antonio and we have a little bit of a different cultural angle on some of this stuff, we are going to talk a little bit about Dia de Muertos today. Uh, at least from my perspective, we have been celebrating this for many years in my family. And that's the reason we're going to do it paranormal fall as opposed to just a Halloween special. So we'll be talking about Halloween, a little bit about Dia de Muertos, and then Mike and I have some banger movie recommendations for you at the end of the episode. So make sure you hang out for that. Banger. If you're into this type of content, specifically stuff like the paranormal, haunting, creepy, dark history, and all that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Go ahead and go down and hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button so you get notifications. When we publish new episodes, we're aiming to do these about once or twice a month. Also, don't forget to like the video. That helps us out tremendously and share it with any friends, family, anybody else you think might like this. So with that, we'll jump into the first uh, topic for today, which is Halloween. For me, Halloween is probably my favorite holiday. Maybe it's tied there with Christmas. And specifically, Dia de Muertos is tied in there with Halloween for me. It's one of the reasons it's one of my favorite. But so this episode definitely is going to be one of my favorites to do. Mike, what about you? How are you with Halloween in general and ranking of your holidays? And how do you feel about it? And how do you feel about this episode in general? Halloween is always my favorite holidays. I'm perpetually in the creepy supernatural portion of my YouTube feed ghost hunts i'll do that stuff like 24 7 any time of the year it's halloween for me pretty much all the time yeah same here i'm not like that deep into the paranormal like you are but i am pretty deep i would say and halloween has always been ever since i was a little kid i've loved halloween i loved all the stuff around this season and not just that but like this fall season in general especially in texas right where it's super hot during the summer and halloween is usually the first part where you get like some mild weather and i'm not even saying great weather just like not boiling hot what's funny is that i feel like on halloween it's always rainy it always i'd say at least for the last 10 years it's been rainy on uh halloween because we go trick-or-treating and it's always just like drizzly and gross and my son's in his costume or, or and i'm like trying to trips around holding the bag of candy and trying to get through the strangers and not be kidnapped yeah, that's the thing, right? And so that, yeah, I wanted to take it back to the childhood first. Let's start there. And then we'll fast forward to what Halloween is like today because they're very different as far as I'm concerned. And I'm not really sure, like maybe for kids nowadays to them, it's the same or maybe the sentiment or whatever is the same. But as, as an adult looking back on Halloween as a kid versus today, there's the obvious things that are different. But also I think just the mood is different and it just feels different. And I think it's I think it's a sad thing. I don't think it's as great as it used to be. But I also think that we it could be better if communities just came together and tried to make it better. I, I think it goes a little further. It goes beyond that because, like, to your point, like, when we were kids, we had the entire neighborhood grouped together. Everyone had their lights on. You went by everyone to see their decorations and see if anybody was dressed up and giving out candy and stuff like that. It was definitely a, a full neighborhood thing. It lasted a good, to me, I felt like we, we were out there for a while, at least a good hour, maybe two hours at the most. We'd go, if we would go through one whole neighborhood, we'll top of the car, go to a different neighborhood and, and hit that one up. I'd have a big bag of candy when I was done. And oh yeah. Oh yeah. Was not like Absolutely. That Absolutely. I felt the same way. Like you said, right? The neighborhood, just walking around our own neighborhood, right? We could be an hour, maybe longer because almost everybody had their light. Not everybody literally, but almost. At least a good 80 to 90% of people had their light on. They were giving Absolutely. out candy. Now, my neighborhood, we got the cheap candy, right? Let's just be honest. We, we weren't a wealthy family. We didn't grow up in a wealthy neighborhood. But Same here. we would get in the car and drive to the rich neighborhood. And over there, they were giving out like full candy bars, like <laughs> whole Hershey's bars. And to us kids, that we were like, a wow, this is insane. That was a smart way to go get the car and go to the rich neighborhood. Hey, it's capitalism, right? You learn it as a kid to work with it. Yeah. So the first thing is that's a huge difference between when we were kids and nowadays. When I go out nowadays with 
my kids and go out to a, a Halloween trick or treating. And mind you, they're my kids are really small, so we don't we can't be out that long anyway. But we'll try to hit up like one of the local neighborhoods. Hardly anybody has their lights on anymore, and it's there's that right. So number one, there aren't many people that have their lights on, and then number two. It's not as safe as it used to be when we were kids. And that, that could be like a perception thing, but I feel like things have changed. I feel like when I was a kid, yes, we would go trick or treating. We would be with our parents or at least at the very least, my much older cousins or something like that. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, it's not safe to just let kids go. Even with like older kids, it's almost like the adults have to be around just because you can't trust who's out there and what they're doing. That's absolutely right. Because not only are the parents that are taking their children out having to be like on guard and make sure that there aren't strangers around them there but also the people you're, you're walking to a complete stranger's home knocking on their door and essentially asking them for food <laughs> and right. you don't know what's going to happen on the other side of that door but the biggest i feel is that something that uh, for us you since we're, we're older we've been through two i feel like society shifting events that have made events like trick-or-treating so different because 9-11 mm -hmm. and COVID, those are the two things we've been through that, that have shifted people's interactions with other people mm -hmm. greatly. And 9-11, that, that kind of put a divide from a racial standpoint, I feel. And then COVID, just whatever factions were together at, after 11 COVID split those up even more so and to the point that no one wants to talk to other people no one wants to be close to other people they're so afraid of getting sick they're so afraid of contracting something that they're just you no know, and of course that conveys onto Halloween and other events where people get together or try to get together but they no longer want to because they're so afraid of catching something oh absolutely I will even say that like COVID has changed a lot for a lot of people in a lot of different ways. And it, it impacted everybody differently. Like I remember when COVID first showed up and people were panicking about it. And then at least here in California, they did the lockdowns. And I remember so many people were like upset about it. And I'm like, wait a minute, you're, you're telling me I'm just gonna get to stay home and I don't have to go out and interact with people? You have to go, this right. is great. Like, I was excited. I could just sit home and play video games and work and whatever. And, and I realized that I'm lucky in that way, but I, there were other people who were more social and not antisocial, and they struggled through it and they had a, a, yeah. a lot of issues. So COVID definitely caused some damage on many different levels. And I'm happy to talk about that on a different type of podcast. But I did want to go back to something you were just talking about, which is the risk and kind of the things you have to be concerned with. And I remember distinctly when I was a kid growing up, and mind you, this was like in the 80s and 90s when I was doing the trick or treating and mind you, early, early day. 90s kind of brewing in the background and I remember the local news doing like these stories and telling hey, parents wash out if you check your kids candy because people are putting razor blades in there or people are putting needles I remember that my favorite ones were like oh they're putting like marijuana in the whatever and I remember or acid as, or acid whatever and I remember as a yeah. kid thinking oh man that's really dangerous and stuff and then now mind you never once did I see a razor Never once did I see a needle, never once did I experience any kind of drug induced anything as a kid, but this used to be everywhere. And even to this day, you will see like local police departments put out like bulletins, make sure you check your kid's candy. And look, yep. I agree. It's a good idea for the parents to look over their kid's candy. But I also think a lot of that is just straight up propaganda, uh, <laughs> propaganda, overreaction to anything. And especially yeah. look, razor blades, needles and drugs cost money. So whoever's <laughs> out there throwing this stuff in kids' candy supposedly either has They're not going to pay for that. They're not going to pay for that. That's It's stupid. That's, so it doesn't make yeah. any sense. But I'm not telling people not to check the candy. You should still check the candy just in case. But I I'll think check the, the candy. The, to me, it's like local police departments trying to have job security. They don't do much else. There's and In certain areas. Obviously, if you're in like big cities, the police are overloaded. But if you're out in Mayberry... They're not really doing anything, right? They're they're investigating the last time the local kids egg somebody's house or something. So anyway, yeah. So when that's one of the things I want to say is like when we were kids, there was always this propaganda around all the risks of Halloween. But generally, when the night hit, sun went down and you went out there with your family, your parents, your cousins, whatever, you had a great time. All kinds of cool costumes from whatever oh, yeah. the big movie of the year was like Ghostbusters 2 
or whatever, all the way to the kids who just took an old sheet, cut some holes in it, and they were a ghost. Heck yeah, it, man, that was fun. It literally didn't matter. You could have anything for a costume. The kids were all having a good time. And I, the other thing I remember, and I don't know if you remember this too much, but when you would walk up to a house and you would have a cool costume on, usually the adults at the house would be like, oh, that's a really cool costume. Or if they didn't know what you were, they would ask you, what is that? And you would tell them, they'd yeah. be like, oh, that's cool. What about in your neighborhood? How was how did that go? Yeah, I mean, everyone really talked to everyone when we were in nine times out of 10. I was actually at my grandparents because where my mom and I lived, we were in the apartment complex. So we would always end up going to my grandparents' house. And if the things weren't hopping over there, we'd go to Uncle Bill's house, which would is it was at a nicer part of town. So they had, of course, better candy. And but yeah, we'd have I had so many Halloween's where I would hang out with my cousins and uh, everyone was, they had their friends with them too. So we have these little impromptu Halloween parties and it was fun. It was great. I had great times. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, again, we, we always had a good time. And like you mentioned earlier, it felt like we were out all night and we weren't right collectively because Halloween falls where it does in the year, the nights start earlier. You would be out there at maybe seven o'clock, eight o'clock at the latest because of the time change nine, ten, in nine times out of ten uh, nine times out of ten it was during a school night so it was on a school night so you had to go to bed earlier anyway because you school the next morning exactly and so as soon as the sun was down and it was dark you were running out the door to go collect all your candy and the other thing i remember back then versus now is and i guess this kind of makes sense because not as many people do it now but back then we used to get these buckets and do, do you remember when mcdonald's used to like you get the happy meal and you'd get the little buckets to put your candy in hell yeah man those are the best they they had the the glow in the dark green witch ones those are my favorite i like those yeah they had the witch the pumpkin and the ghost right because that's right they're the ghost and what's funny is i was at target just the other day just getting some regular household stuff and i passed by the halloween section and i saw that they had not the exact same ones but almost the same and they were like a dollar or two a bucket to buy the bucket nice. for your kids now I, I didn't get any yet or whatever but i saw them and i was like oh that reminded me a lot of the of my childhood and like the, the mcdonald's because that was really almost all the kids in my neighborhood this is a testament to like what's wrong with america at that era almost all the kids in my neighborhood had those buckets from McDonald's. So you know that we all, got hit with, we all got hit with sodium and cholesterol like crazy and we're paying for it now as adults. But the buckets were awesome. And I remember at least back then, if I didn't fill up that bucket one time, I did not do enough trick or treating. Yes, absolutely. I never, I think I only went trick or treating once with the bucket. Uh, but for the most part, I would have, a, I had a bag, I had a good sack. It was either something that was my mom made or it was like a themed plastic one from Walgreens or from somebody was giving out a themed Halloween bag for for free somewhere. And I had a free one from somewhere. Yeah, there were some years where we did the same thing. We had a, a Target or a Walmart or a H-E-B bag or something. That was our yeah, Halloween yeah, thing. Yeah. And then the other years. But we it was had a themed McDonald's Halloween buckets. bag, though. It wasn't just like a shopping bag or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because they were like a dollar, right? Or less back yeah. then. And then the McDonald's thing, it just it came with a Happy Meal, which you were going to get anyways as a kid. So it was like, great, like you two birds, one stone. Parents didn't have to spend anything beyond the poor life choices they were making with buying food anyway. But that's a different issue. And so, yeah, I had a, I remember feeling that thing on candy. And the thing was, again, in my neighborhood, like you would get inundated with dum-dums and sweetums and like these smarties. Not, yeah, not great yes. candies. And then no, man, you would go to another nice. neighborhood to get stuff from the M&M &M Mars Corporation, right? Like the, the good stuff, so to speak. It's about this. And the other thing is, I remember, and maybe it was different. Again, this is why, even though we were in the same city, we were in two different parts of town and two different neighborhoods and two different things. But yeah. at least in my area, there, there weren't so many commercially produced costumes. There were some. I don't remember there being a spirit of Halloween. There might have been. I just don't remember. No. It. But most people had stuff that they made themselves or it was like a Disney costume that the Disney store was selling or something like that. Whereas now... I was even where, before Disney store. Whereas now, if I go to Target, Walmart, Costco, it doesn't matter. There are shelves and shelves of Halloween costumes. What about in your neighborhood? What did you see there? Yeah, no, everyone made their own costume for the most part, because again, based on where we grew up, uh, if you bought your own costume, those were expensive. 
those mm -hmm. were cheap you yeah you would get like you said your, your own sheets cut your holes out make your own little attachments and horns and whatever paint your own face use your mom's makeup to do whatever little clown thing you want to have go that you use whatever stuff you had available to you had to be resourceful to find like material and, and pastels and shapes and colors and stuff and you got to make your own stuff I, absolutely uh, i was thinking about it while you were talking about it i don't remember and I have to ask my mom, because honestly, I'm not going to remember all of this, but I don't remember having a store-bought costume until I was in high school or somewhere around there. I feel like when I was a little yeah. kid, it was always something that we made or we made up. I remember one year, distinctly, the dollar store actually was a 99 cent store, RIP, right? Because they're out of business now. But yeah. the 99 cent store in our neighborhood had, uh, I want to say it was like a Freddy Krueger mask and glove thing, and it was 99 cents each, okay? So... I put on like this sweater that I had found somewhere and basically was Freddy Krueger for two bucks. That's and cool. <laughs> that was my costume that year, right? Because that's, and, and other times it was the ghost thing and other times it was like other random stuff. I remember making all kinds of things as a kid, but now, like I said, it's, I don't want to make, I don't want to say that it takes the joy out of it, but there's no creativity to it anymore. At least not for most people, not when you can get a costume for the kid at Target for $10. Right. It's in a way that's better because now everyone can afford to have a costume because they're not that expensive, but it also takes out it like the, the creativity because I saw some crazy things when I was a kid is people just made up stuff and that was our costume. I agree. I would love to, I would definitely love to see some more creativity in, in costumes. Um, in fact, what I think I see more creativity now you have people doing cosplay with 3d printed, like attachments and other paraphernalia and stuff to accessories to make their costume look cool yeah but yeah i'm still trying to figure out what i'm going to do this year i'm not sure i we already have an idea of our what our kids are gonna, our kids are really into the star wars young jedi the the cartoon thing and oh. so we're probably going to do something with that which would mean that i should probably do some star warsy thing but the thing i really want to do this year i just don't know if i'm going to have time to pull it off because halloween's in a couple of weeks is I want to do V for Vendetta. I want to be V from V for Vendetta. Um, I mean, be... really, to, to be fair, all you really have to do is just get a hat, the the hat mask and a cloak, and you're good to go. Exactly. I already have the mask. I've had the mask for years. I just need yeah, the, I use the hat and the cloak. However, I do have a hat that is that I bought for a costume I did years ago. I still have the hat. It, it's a, a top hat uh, oh, with these buckles on the front of it exactly like the one that what's his name Saul Hudson Who? no Saul Hudson slash from Guns N' Roses oh oh okay okay yeah a top hat like that now it's not like a nice one it's it's a costume piece so it's flimsy or whatever but I've had that for years and I was thinking man could I take slash's top hat and then mix it with the V for different vendetta mask and make something like different like a, like a slash version of V for vendetta carrying like a guitar around or something that would be cool it would be like a steampunk theme but but also think about like a if I were to take Slash from Guns N' Roses and mix him with V for Vendetta, I almost like I'm creating a character that beyond belongs in like Mad Max Furiosa. Yeah, like on the front wailing on the guitar while the flames are going with the V for Vendetta mask on. And a, anyway, so I'm thinking about it. I haven't made a decision yet. Whatever I go with, I'll probably Re remember that description and put AI later and get a, an image. Yeah, whatever I go with, I'll put up some pictures in our on our, our Instagram later. But yes. yeah, this is just some ideas I'm kicking around. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But yeah, th that's a big thing that's different. A lot more creativity back when we were kids, a lot more commercialized stuff now. And it's six of one half dozen of another, right? On the one hand, do you really want that much commercialism in any of our holidays? The answer is no. But on the other hand, it's made it a lot more affordable for everyone to have a costume as opposed to trying to figure something out that you can make. So I would rather have options than none. So I'm okay with it from that perspective. So that was that was little kids, right? Now let's fast forward a little bit to like high school, college era. Obviously our costumes changed a lot during that era. Some of them, this is a family friendly podcast, so we can't talk about some of the kinds of costumes that we saw in high school and college. So I, but everyone, so I can't talk about when I was a sexy nurse? Exactly. So we'll, we'll leave that off the, the podcast. But if you are of a certain age, like we are, you know exactly what we're talking about. You move into like your mid to late teens, 20s, Costumes change significantly during that time mm -hmm. period. They're serving Especially a different purpose. 
especially during college. That's right. We're not going to talk about that. And I have no photos of any of that, just so in case anyone's asking. But uh, one thing I do want to call out, did you ever, because by the way, Mike and I went to the same college in case no one paid attention to us the first couple episodes. Did you ever go to the boobash thing that they had there at St. Mary's? I, I did. Actually, I worked it one year to, to let people a boobash essentially it was a Hall Halloween celebration that would be on campus where students and also people from outside of the university could come in and walk through the dormitories and the students would decorate them for Halloween. Sometimes you'd have a haunted house. Sometimes you'd have um, other spooky things. People would jump out and scare you, hand out candy to all the little kids trick-or-treating through there. But yeah, I, I did it once. I think when my son was a baby, we went through there. And then I went through there when I was actually, I worked for the newspaper, I went through there. But I was actually just doing it for as a student. I was just walking around and checking out costumes. Yeah, I, I went to it once or twice, but I remember there was one year, I can't remember which year it was. One of the guys in our, I lived in Treadaway, which was single dorm rooms, but pretty much prison cells we were living in there. And one of the guys, much. signed up for i don't remember what it was but he was on there was like and I, this is going to sound like a joke but it's true there was like this festival not festival but like a party planning committee or something like that within treadway and so they would organize all these different events throughout the year there would be like an ice cream social and there was like all these different things but one of the things they did like big was boobash so this group of like people from throughout the treadway dorm there was like i don't know how many of them there were probably like at least 20 of them they would plan all this stuff out. And so one of the guys in my wing of the dorm, shout out to Brian, was on this committee. And I remember one year he was like, come on, guys, we really need to like pitch in for this. Brian was a really good friend of ours. So we all threw in and did this crazy like thing in our wing as far as like decorations and all that kind of stuff. And then, like you said, we there was like an event that happened earlier in the evening that was for the little kids, right? And the neighborhood kids that would come through and get their candy. But then once that was over, it would just turn into a night of pretty much debauchery at that point. I don't even want to talk about what happened after that. But I remember Brian like was like so adamant about this. And he was like super into Halloween too, because he was like a big fan of insane clown posse and all this other weird stuff. So anyway, that was that. And then after that, it just went into adulthood. And like I said, I obviously being an adult, but not having kids, it fell off and I really didn't get back into it until more recent, as far as like the trick or treating and the decorations and all that kind of stuff until more recently when my kids came around. But I ha it always has been a huge thing for me and I've always celebrated it again from a Dia de Muertos perspective. And now I'm recombining Dia de Muertos and Halloween again with having kids. How did Halloween change for you from the period where we got out of college, then we went into like normal adulthood without kids and then to the point where you had a kid and then now today, like how did that shift for you over time? Honestly, I think it hit its peak, like in terms of like my own personal fun, my, that hit its peak like in college. I didn't like right after college, I would still hang out with friends, still do fun stuff. But yeah, like you get into the more, start working. I don't really think I did much after that. I, I maybe went to the occasional bar occasional like maybe one or two house parties from I don't know, 2000 to about 2010 i'd say and that whole period of time like i would I really wouldn't do too much and then my son came and yeah that definitely took a completely different turn then it was like halloween was my favorite i'll just do something every year we had costume plan like months ahead of time where everything was like all about what you were going to do for him, making sure he had the best experience. I think that his first Halloween, I was working at Time Warner Cable as a sales guy at a similar to Blue Bash, they had a Halloween celebration thing where you bring your kids in and you can do a trick or treating at various, the corporate building. So you go into marketing and they'll have candy up there for you. You go to like HR and they'll have like candy there for your kids. And he came in dressed as a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Nice. My... Yeah, it, it changes a lot. And so like we, we're the same way. We were trying to plan their costumes when they were little. And then now that at least my daughter's a little bit older, she wants to pick her own. And so it's my son's still too little to really pick his own, so to speak. But I know that in a, in another year or two, they're going to be entirely doing whatever they want at that point. Yeah. And, and I, I agree with you. Like same thing, places that I happened to work at that had ho office Halloween stuff, that was great. And then I really didn't do much until I had kids. But what was really cool was 
the last place I was at working, there was one woman there who actually worked for me in my department that was a major Halloween fan. Humongous, it was her favorite holiday. She lived for this holiday every year. So as far as like how our team went, she always like would talk about it. Would She had this recipe book and it obviously it was like a fake recipe book, but it was recipes based on the nightmare before Christmas like snake and spider oh. stew and stuff like that. So she would make those kind of things and then like share. But they were like legit it. things. So like she made Halloween festive for everybody on our That's team cool. just because that was her thing. And so I was appreciative for that because it was also probably my favorite, if not second favorite holiday. And then fast forward to now, it's a little bit different, but that kind of leads me into the next section of this, which is all tied in together, which is Dia de Muertos. And I know you and I talked about this a little bit before but maybe give us your quick synopsis of your experience with Dia de Muertos, not just, you know, as a kid, but also as an adult. And then we all chime in with what we've done. Okay. And as you mentioned, we discussed this earlier and then I pretty much said, I have no experience with this whatsoever because my, like growing up, it was very much just, okay, it's Halloween. That's it. We go Halloween, we trick or treat, do our thing, go home. Blah, that's it. That's And then we go on the next day. That's it. The concept was mentioned I grew up around really closely around my grandparents who were mexican heritage so yeah like i growing up uh, dia, de, dia de los puertos wasn't really a big deal in my house it was acknowledged it was there we my family talked about it but it wasn't something that we had like an actual altar set up we didn't have uh, uh like the proper things set up and but i knew i had families i had i had family members that would participate and i had friends that did but i never really did any of that myself but didn't you though you did pretty involved in that weren't you yeah but actually it started off very similar to your story so growing up we talked about it a lot around that season we didn't have the altar or the ofrenda set up now we knew what it was and like our local church would set one up and like there, there was all this other kind of stuff but it wasn't until i was moved out on my own that i actually formally set up my own ofrenda every year and did all that kind of stuff and this goes back to something that I don't want to dwell on this too much on this podcast episode, but it's one of those things where our parents' generation, because you and I are the same age, right? They grew up in a very tough environment and they, for many reasons, a lot of the cultural things were muted, if you want to call it that, from them, just because they didn't want to cause a thing where we didn't assimilate properly into American society, all that kind of stuff. And so it wasn't like the stuff was gone, but it was definitely muted. It was subdued, right? Fast forward into adult age, and I wanted to make sure that my kids had the opposite experience. So from the minute they were born, they were learning in two languages, right? And they participated in all of the events uh, across both cultures and by both cultures, I would say like standard American culture, as well as our Hispanic and Latino cultures, right? We, we put them together going now. It's a very different world for us and for my kids. And so we set up the ofrenda every year. Now I do things a little bit differently than a lot of other people, even within, not only within the United States, but even within our own culture. So for example, while Dia de Muertos isn't technically until November, right? The early part of November, it's right after Halloween, right? We would consider All Saints Day and All Souls Day in, in the American culture, right? It's around right. there. Um, I actually put up our ofrenda at the beginning of October, not necessarily the first day, but like the first week for sure. And the reason is simple. I want my kids to see it and see it every day for an entire month, see everybody on there. We talk about the people on there and why it's important to remember those who have passed before us. Now, we only go so many generations back on the ofrenda, but my hope is that as my kids take it over, once I'm gone and then they pass it on to my grandkids and et cetera, et cetera, the ofrenda right. just grows. It, it, it keeps several generations back. Now, obviously at a certain point, that's untenable, right? Because you're talking about thousands of people on there. But the point yeah. is, I want it to but stay. That would be pretty cool though, if you think about it. Yeah, I want it to stay for as long as possible. I haven't done it yet, but I do intend to do it sometime in the next couple of years is we keep the pictures framed and then we keep the frames inside of this bin and the bin has all of the other decorations like the papel picado and everything else that goes with the ofrenda right what i want to do is like print out like a short excerpt of who's in the picture when they live the birth and the death dates and then that's what they did who they were right and stick them on the back of the of the frame so that 
as it gets passed down generations from now, where it's outside of the memory of myself and even my kids, someone, people know who these people were. They knew who they were. They know who they were and they can see yeah. all that kind of stuff. So that's something I'll be working on later. But that's awesome. Th the key thing here is the weaving of the two worlds, right? So what you would call it the normal and the paranormal. And that's where it ties into this podcast. And I mentioned earlier that in, in actually at the end of the last podcast, talking about doing this podcast, that my kids are not afraid of skeletons and ghosts and all those kind of things, right? Even though they're little. And that's because they were taught from a very young age that's normal. And because we have decorations up for the other muertos and there are calaveras everywhere in the house, it's not a scary thing to them, right? To them, it's literally just a transition from one point of your, you know, life circle, if you want to call it that, to the next. And it's not like something to fear. And it's a positive thing, right? And so that that's how they've been brought up. And hopefully they keep it that way. And yes, they're also participating in normal Halloween with everyone else. And there's like the spooky and the ghosts and goblins. And that's all great. I have nothing against that. But I want to make sure that they're not that they grow up understanding that there are, in fact, two worlds, right? And we walk in the middle of both of them all the time, right? We just don't think about it. We are living in the one we see every day, but there's an entire other one that exists in parallel with it. And we're constantly involved with it in various different ways. And I think that's where this podcast really shines in that we're exploring that other world that is there. And also, much like our real world that we live in today has positive and negative connotations to it. So I want to make sure that they get all of that. So as far as the other Muertos goes, that's the main thing to point out here is that it's something that we do every single year. I put up the ofrenda the beginning of October. I go all the way until actual Dia de Muertos. And then the day after the holidays over, that exact day, I take down everything, put it back in the bin, put the bin in the closet and immediately bring out the Christmas decorations. And Christmas for, for us goes from the day after Dia de Muertos all the way until Christmas. There is no other holiday between those in our family. Let's just put it that way. So Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving doesn't exist for us. Now, Obviously, it does right in America and actually Canada too. They have their own Thanksgiving, and it's not yeah. like we, it's not like we ignore it. If a friend invites us over to a Thanksgiving dinner, that's fine. We'll go. We have. We'll do it. But as far as like in our house, it doesn't exist. It's just another random thing that happens every year, and then we move on to Christmas. And those are actually the two big holidays that I actually care about. The rest of them are like whatever. They happen, great. But those two are what matter. So the other muertos for me, and and at least for our family, is the celebration of of life in death and tying the two worlds together and looking at both sides of the coin at the same time. And the hope is that, like I said, our kids and their kids and multiple generations of children will grow up and learn all of this and keep the tradition going because it's really important, right? It's a, it's a tribute to our past, but also looking towards the future. So with that said, if any of you all have personal experiences and things you want to share around Halloween or the other muertos, or maybe there's another holiday that you celebrate in your culture that's neither that's not the two that we just talked about. Please share them with us. Put them in the comment section below. You can also tag us on Instagram with any of this stuff. You can DM us on there if we happen to follow you back, which we will if you follow us. Or you can send it to the email addresses that are listed on our website. By the way, you can find all of this stuff on our link tree, which is linked from our YouTube bio, as well as our Instagram bio. The link tree has everything and you can figure out how to contact us there. Please share your stories. If you want to share media like pictures and whatnot, you can put them on Instagram and share them with us, or you can send them to the email addresses. It doesn't matter, but we do want to hear from you around this specific season and this holiday season. What do you do in your family? What do you do in your culture? We love to hear all the different angles on this. Also, if you've been with us thus far and you enjoy this kind of content, remember to like and subscribe and also to hit the bell below so that you get notifications of when we publish new episodes. And if you're still listening at this point, number one, thank you. And number two, why? I know this is great. It's great. But like Mike said, this must interest you somehow. Why? Let us know. Tell us in no. the comments below. So now we move on to what I'm considering the best section of this podcast. And that's just because I'm a major movie fan. I've been since I was a little kid, a major movie fan. Mike is also a huge movie fan. And Man, I've seen a couple have, movies. I've seen a couple movies. And we have a very diverse viewpoint on movies, too, which I think is great. It would be, sad if, it would be sad if everybody on this podcast had the same opinion. Let's put it that way. So agreed, agreed, agreed. 
So we're gonna start out with the Halloween stuff first. Then we're gonna do a little section on the other Muertos, and then we're gonna wrap it all together in a way that I think makes sense for the holidays. Mike, let me start with you. Halloween, give us some bangers from your like recommendation library, if you want to call it that. So for Halloween, horror is always, but horror in itself is nuanced. There's so many different levels. You have psychological, you have gory, you have demonic centered versus centered more in realism, strangers. Strangers is one of those creepy movies that will they just they're scary because it could happen a family is at home somebody can show up hi how are you i'm stranded can i use your phone they let you in boop you're dead that's creepy strangers that's a horror movie one of my favorites cabin in the woods joss whedon movie anybody knows joss whedon they he knows you know him from buffy the vampire slayer he also directed a couple of marvel movies but yeah, Cabin in the Woods is one of those. I feel that it's it's a twist in 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 that horror genre that you don't expect. It starts off as this campy, regular people just going off into the cabin for the weekend and wanting to have fun, folks, relax, chill, and they end up in the middle of this horror circumstance that happens. I don't want to spoil the movie, but there's a twist that where this circumstance is actually coming from and why it's happening, and that from where it goes from where it starts is just like this what i love that movie it's a great movie Um, and by the way you did say something that i neither one of us had on the list but i do want to throw it back in there buffy the vampire slayer oh yeah excellent Excellent series there was a video game released for it on original xbox that has become a cult classic at this point but i know neither of us had it on our stuff and since you mentioned it i want to say if you're into kind of the paranormal creepy scary stuff buffy the vampire slayer is actually a great series for that Great series. And did you ever see the original movie? No, I didn't. There was an original movie. Pee Wee Herman. Paul Rubens. Paul, Paul Rubens. He was a vampire in the oh, original movie. nice. That guy and, has done so many different things. Like, one of my favorite roles for him was actually in Blow, where he played Derek for real. That was random. <laughs> random as hell, but I loved it. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Is it's, SMG it's, in there, or is it somebody else? No, it's not Sarah Michelle Gellar. It was Christy Swanson. Christy Swanson, she was a, she was actually a, a model from, I think, from the 80s. Great, campy movie, right up your alley. Mm-hmm. You love in, in terms of gore, in terms of classic gore, Army of Darkness mm-hmm. uh, or Evil Dead, either one of those. Evil Dead, yep, yep. Evil Dead, the original and the remake was, oh, I love the remake because it was so, it's like, it takes this like bloodiness to this whole other level. There's like chainsaws and there's not puddles, but like puns of blood just it's just ah it's, it's like gallagher with the pumpkins but with blood but with blood yes pretty much. Not pumpkins watermelons yeah watermelons yeah all the pumpkins would be fitting for the season true and i think um, he died recently too if i'm not mistaken really i'd like to actually top it off with anything from the vhs series the free movies were the absolute best any ones after that were meh. but the first three the first one is the one that like made my heart like <clears throat> on the paranormal activity level. I know exactly what you're talking about. But uh, so we can't just gloss over paranormal activity. You mentioned it there. So paranormal activity, great. Insidious, great. If you want to go further back, you have like classic Hitchcock horror, some stuff like The Shining, right? You go further back. There's that's all House great on stuff. Hill. House on um, the Hill. If anybody knows Alfred Hitchcock, you would know Rope. Rope was actually one of my favorite movies. Um, Children of the Corn. Children of the Corn was cool, yeah. Uh, classic horror like that, Exorcist. Uh, Exorcist, Exorcist is, yes. is is something that I think it's funny though, because I watch it now as an adult and I laughed at it because it's funny. It's like when she's like, when she's mm-hmm. Jane up and she's like, Man. she's like talking to the priest and just being silly and uh, it's just funny. Yeah, it, it's funny now, and it's mainly because suit. it's mainly because the, the effects of that era are a joke now. The effects aside, because I mean, Amityville Horror, the first one, that movie still freaks me out. Like, it still gets to me on a the inside kind of level. Like, it just one of those that scratches your soul a little bit. But Exorcist, I don't know for some reason, it's never really been I've never been afraid of it. Never been like a movie. When that I really, saw it, like when I saw it younger, when I was younger, I should say, it was scary. Now as an adult, it's not really scary anymore. 
Um, but yeah. also I've pivoted away from what most people are watching from the horror stuff. I'm watching more like you mentioned earlier, like B movies, campy kind of stuff. So actually yeah. that'll go into my list. Now, one of them that's not on my list, but I want to mention it anyway, was Stigmata. Love that movie. Oh, Great movie. Yeah. Patricia Raquette. Yep. If you're, if you like this type of genre, Stigmata is an amazing movie. At, so my list goes, I have quite a few of them on here. The first one is Ruins. You and I talked about that actually before the episode. That was a good uh, one. Yeah, that's the one where it's like the Mayan temple or whatever it is. And Ooh. so I, again, I'm not going to give away the the plot or anything like that to anybody, but Ruins, great movie. Go watch it. Rubber. Rubber is another one that I came across by way of, I want to say it was like IMDb, Amazon's thing or whatever. Yeah. This one is amazing because it's about a psionic tire, literally a car tire. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating here. That has psionic powers and basically just goes around killing people. And, and it's sentient. A, and it's a sentient and it's a B movie. It is awesome. I love it. The cinematography is like on point for something somebody could do with their iPhone. Okay. So there's that. Another one is Velocipaster. You've Again, talked not- about this movie here. I think this movie, this one deserves more of an explanation. Veloc- so this is, I'm assuming there's a dinosaur and a priest involved. Yeah, so again, not going to give away the the plot or anything like that, but it is exactly well, what you're saying. by the title. Just say. It's a priest that transforms into a velociraptor and it's a horror movie. So I'm going to gi- I'm just going to give you that. So if you're into priests, dinosaurs what? and horror, this is your movie. Okay? Let's put it that way. Jurassic Park goes Christian. Exactly. House of a Thousand Corpses. Oh, Any Rob nice. Zombie's movie. House of yeah. a Thousand Corpses, The Firefly Family unbelievable and the best part of this is if you're from texas like we are and you've ever been out in west texas which is where like inspiration of this movie came from you absolutely would believe any of this could have happened and probably did like seriously so if you're into rob zombie and or house of a thousand corpses or any of that kind of stuff that movie and then there's a couple other ones he did that were also like loosely based on that family so there's like a i think there's two or three of them now of the movies yeah. But absolutely recommend House of a Thousand Corpses. is a great movie. Bro, we just drove up to Houston past at least a, a good handful of houses that could have fallen within the same parameters. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Te- and that's East Texas. And by the way, which is its own yeah. brand of whatever. But West Horror. Texas is just Cre- on another level. It's crazy out there. We talked about this one earlier. I just mentioned it was Poltergeist. Classic horror, if you're into it. I love that movie nice. still to this day. Great movie. Did you know that an Altergeist was actually shot in Seattle, Washington? I didn't know that, but we'll make sure we mention that in our Haunted Seattle episode. Coming up soon, by the way. Just a premonition there. I'm not telling you exactly when it's coming. Segway. It's coming soon. Another one. One of my favorite movies to this day, and I will watch this. And if I happen to be flipping through the channels, which I never am, but let's be honest. But if I happen to be and I see it on, I'm going to stop and watch it to the end is Silence of the Lambs. Oh, nice. Anthony Hopkins just Hello, cannot Clarice. be beat just cannot be beat yes exactly clarice right so if you're into that type of stuff silence of the lambs yeah, amazing movie Baba Beans. there was another movie that came out that was again part of that universe i think it was called red dragon if i'm not mistaken it was okay with but ray, also ray fines with ray fines that one was yeah, good yeah also a good movie not as good as you can you're not going to beat anthony Hopkins. yeah i wouldn't know but, but you're yeah. right though it's part of the same universe and great i think Han- hannibal also the tv show yeah, Hannibal the TV show, absolutely. The Mothman prophecies, in general, right? So th- there's the movie, The Mothman prophecies, but also like the story, and then there's all these documentaries about it. So you're, if you've never heard about the Mothman prophecies, go look it up. If you're a fan of this podcast, it is right up your alley, guaranteed. At some point or another, we may end up doing a story on. Oh, we're prophecies. absolutely going to do it. We're we absolutely. I just yeah. don't know when we're going to have time to, but we're absolutely yeah. going to do Mothman prophecies, and then. There's one more that I want to throw in here, and this is, again, because this is like a family-friendly podcast, which is The Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, This is one of my favorite movies, and I actually consider this both a Halloween movie and a Christmas movie. So whenever we get to our Christmas episode, I know you're probably thinking, Fabula Obscura podcast about Christmas. Absolutely. Have none of you seen Krampus? Krampus, I was just going to (laughs) say. And we're going to talk about that later. But the other one is The Nightmare Before Christmas. It's obviously more like family friendly, but it is a great movie. As far as I'm concerned, it is Tim Burton's opus, like magnum opus. This is he peaked at this and then he's done other good stuff. But this was it. Bro, have you seen Frank and Weenie? Come on. Come on. Nightmare Before Christmas. You're not going to get better than that. So if you are into that, 
and you, your, your Halloween is your thing and you love that kind of stuff and you love Tim Burton type movies, you should go watch Nightmare Before Christmas. Edward Scissorhands. Edward Scissorhands yeah. was a great movie too. Other ones that I'm thinking Ed about. Wood. Beetlejuice, the old one. I haven't seen the new one. I don't know if it's good or not, so I can't I just saw it. it. I wasn't really impressed. It's going to be hard. Like the first one was lightning in a bottle. It's going to be hard to replicate that. But mm. the first one was amazing. I do love Beetlejuice. It's again, another one that if I happen to see it on somewhere, I'm going to stop and watch it to the end. And that's the end of my Halloween. Granted, there's thousands of these movies, right? So there's no way we can get through all of them on this list. These are some of my favorites that I watch, not every year, but on a pretty regular basis. And then can I have I a couple of uh, honorable mentions. Oh, absolutely. You have honorable mentions, throw them in now. Okay, so I have a couple honorable mentions I want to throw in here. Abbott and Costello meet the mummy. Old school black and white TV from mm -hmm. your kids don't know. TV used to be black and white. And Brandon Fraser's The Mummy. Brandon Fraser's The Mummy, but also Tom Cruise is The Mummy. I will do that. Now, people are going to hate me for this, but I love the Tom Cruise Mummy movie. Let me tell you why. There's, there's several reasons why. The movie is, is just a great movie, but uh, it was actually supposed to uh, be the first of the Dark Universe. They were supposed to reboot this whole Dracula mummy, all the, the classic horror villains and movies for all of them. And they actually did a little bit. Have you ever seen The Invisible Man? I have, yep. That movie, another one. I've That one should have been on the list. Right. That's another And And movie. you just mentioned Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Reeves, man. And went on right. Mm -hmm. Constantine? Constantine. I forgot about Constantine. Oh, wow. One yeah, of my favorite it. movies of all time. Now, we're throwing, I know we threw it in the honorable mention section, but it, really, that is not an honorable mention. That is a that should have been, should have been on the list. Yes. Yeah. Keanu Reeves, by the way. So if you go look up the word Constantine, you're going to get a whole bunch of stuff, right? Because it's name, it's like from Constantinople, right? Ancient history. But right. this movie with Keanu Reeves in it, uh, one of my favorites of all time. Absolute favorite movie, for sure. And that's definitely a movie that I can put on and not only quote lines from, but just watch on a regular, like over and over and over and over. It is just yeah. such a good movie. Hell yeah. Now, earlier I did mention that I was going to do one for the other Muertos, and that's because there are not that many out there. There, There's probably a couple of dozen different movies that deal with the other Muertos. A lot of them are going to be in spanish and so you'll have to watch them with subtitles but there is one that was made relatively recently and i don't mean like last year but like within the last 20 years that is probably a great introduction to it if you've never really heard about it which is the movie coco by uh, disney disney's the one that made it uh excellent movie if you've never seen it and you're into paranormal stuff or you just want to learn more about the uh, mexican slash culture hispanic latino culture Coco is an excellent movie. And there's one thing I have to give Disney credit for is in, at least in this movie, I, I can't speak for the other movies of other cultures, but I can speak for this one being someone who's from this culture and has been ingrained in it since I was born. They did a very good job, not just respecting the tradition, but giving a good viewpoint of what it's actually like to celebrate this holiday, what it means to the culture. Disney just did a great job with this one. So if you want to watch a movie about it, Coco is a great movie in general, and it just happens to be about the other. Movie. Yeah, that's definitely a good movie. Another movie, I don't know. I don't think it was Disney that did it, but The Book of Life. That's mm -hmm. another. It follows on the same themes, Hispanic culture with deaths in the family and things like that. But but yeah, Coco is definitely a great movie. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So I think that brings us to the end of the movie section. So again, like I said, there's going to be thousands of these movies. There's no way for us to cover them all. So if yeah. you have some favorites that you know about especially if they're b movies or like i just thought of that, another one yeah mike's gonna okay if, if you thought about some movies especially b movies that didn't really get like the popularity or the the public acknowledgement please put them in the comments below so that we can read about them and understand them again tag us on instagram send it to our emails we want to hear from you give us more ideas maybe there's some that we haven't watched yet that would be great for us to watch let us know yeah I'm always down for some creepy movies. Terrifier. I didn't even mention Terrifier. Ter all, oh, yeah. all for at least the first two. I haven't seen the third one yet, but yeah. There you go. So uh, yeah, Terrifier is probably another one. That I've never seen that one, but if uh, Mike's recommending it, it's probably pretty good. So you should watch it. But 
I especially love the B movie. So again, if you have any recommendations of those, please put them in the comments below. I just thought about another one. And I think Ponty Mike Pool. has another one. Ponty Pool. If you ever have a chance, there's a movie called Ponty Pool. It's very rare, but it's, I want to say, early 2000s. But uh, it's uh, like a, a thing that travels through sound. Creepy, but it's awesome. You should watch it. That is awesome. And there's plenty of other ones. Like, I'm thinking of other B movies like The Mist and... There was another this one that Mike good. and I were talking about the other day, and I can't remember the name of it, but it's one, it's another one where you can't see the thing, but if you're out in public and you see it, quote unquote, even though you can't see it, it possesses you and then causes you to go kill other people. And I'll try to remember what it is and put it in the show notes, but that's, that wasn't Fallen, right? No. That's not Washington, but that's a great movie too, great movie. Man, we're never going to end this episode. You Fallen. You just do a thing about movies, bro. Jeez. L let me tell you about the time I almost died. That is a great freaking great movie. Great introduction. And anytime Denzel and John Goodman are in the same movie, it's going to be a good movie. You know, right? it's going to be a good movie. Because sure. those two just are just on another level. So, yeah, and John Goodman plays a great bit role in this movie. Amazing. I just, every time I see him show up in a Denzel movie, I know I'm about to have a good time. So, yes, Fallen is another one. Like I said, there are thousands of these. Yep. There's no way we can cover them all. We could sit here for hours just talking about them all day long. But, if you have any other ones, please put them in the comments below. But the other thing Tell is, me. again, if you've gotten all the way this far towards the very end of the episode, give us a like, give us a subscribe, hit the bell icon so that you get notified when new ones come out. But most importantly, make sure you share this podcast with everyone. One thing I do want to point out, it's a little bit different from the last episode, which is we are now officially not just on YouTube, which is great. You're probably watching this on YouTube, but we also have the same video podcast on Spotify as well as the audio version. And then the audio version is also on Apple Podcasts and just about any other podcatcher out there. If you happen to use a specific podcatcher and you cannot find our podcast or it's not listed, please let me know in the comments below or reach out to me on Instagram or by email and let me know so I can make sure our podcast gets distributed to that specific network or podcatcher so that you can get it on your podcast preferred listening device as well. I try to cover all the major bases, but there are probably some other smaller ones that I don't even know about. And if you prefer to listen that way, let me know so I can make sure it gets everywhere. Cause I want to make sure everyone has a chance to listen to this. Absolutely. All right. <clears throat> all right. And with that, we're going to bring this episode to a close. Mike, are there any parting thoughts that you want to give to our listeners before we close this one out? No, just enjoy your Halloween. Be careful with the candy. Definitely double check it before you eat it. If a crossroads wants to take your soul, maybe just let him see what happens. That's all great advice. I agree with Mike hundred percent. Take your kids out, have fun this Halloween. If you have kids, if not dress up like you're a big kid, go out and have fun. It would be great to see Halloween grow over the next couple of years to something much bigger. Like it used to be when we were kids. The only way that's going to happen is if people like us actually try to make it grow. So go out, do something, have a great Halloween, be safe. Mike said, investigate or check your candies, make sure that no one slipped anything in there that costs money and just have a great time. Mike and I have already discussed what the next couple of episodes are, are, are gonna be. We've already got the next couple of episodes planned out. Same thing though, if you have some ideas for some episodes you would love, please throw them in our comments below, send them to us an email, Instagram, whatever. We're happy to hear about them and they'll give us some more ideas to work on down the road. And with that, I want to go ahead and close out this episode of the Fabula Obscura podcast. Thanks again for listening, and we'll both see you in the next one. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.